Now another problem that comes about because of Bernoulli's equation and the relationship between pressure and height is how the blood gets back from our legs to our heart. To get back from our legs to our heart, the blood needs to do work to overcome that gravity which is pushing it down. So our bodies evolved several ways to help with this. First of all, some of the veins have small contractions in the wall to help push the blood along. Next, when we inhale, the volume of the veins near the heart actually increases, which fills them with blood, and so this has the effect of sucking the blood up. The biggest help, though, is when we exercise heavily, the muscles in our legs near the veins actually contract and expand into the veins and this causes the blood to flow up to the heart. Now this actually has some risks associated with it. If you exercise heavily then your body realizes that it needs more oxygen and so your heart rate actually increases and you pump blood through your body much faster. So if you're exercising heavily your heart rate's increased if you then suddenly stop exercising, that third mechanism for returning blood from your legs to your heart goes away, the contraction of the muscles while you actually exercise. So this means that if you exercise heavily and then suddenly stop, you can end up with not getting enough blood to your heart. So if your heart's at all weak or there's any problems with it, this can be a big problem. So this is why everybody advises you to, after you've exercised heavily, have a bit of a cool down period where you exercise lightly to allow your heart rate to return to its normal resting rate before you completely stop exercising. There are several health problems that can affect the size of your arteries and veins. So Affecting the size of the arteries and veins will affect the speed of the blood flow through them and also the pressure in them. So one of these problems is an aneurysm. An aneurysm is when a vein, or more particularly an artery, expands. So this can happen because you've got weak, weakened arteries and so it can be a hereditary thing or it can happen as the result of some other health effect. But if the cross-sectional area of your artery increases, then the velocity of the blood flowing through the veins is going to decrease. And as a result of this decrease in velocity, you're actually going to feel an increase in pressure, which means that there's going to be more pressure, more force on the walls of that artery. And as a result of that, it's more likely to rupture. So let's have a look now at some of the details of what can happen in an aneurysm. Okay, so the question is, an aneurysm can double the cross-sectional area of a blood vessel. If the velocity of the blood in the vessel is normally 0 0.40 meters per second, what does it become at the aneurysm? What is the change in pressure on the wall? So to work out what the velocity of the blood is, we're going to need to use that the volume flow rate is constant. So the cross-sectional area at place 1 times the velocity at place 1 is equal to the cross-sectional area at place 2 times the velocity at place 2. And let's call the place with the aneurysm place 2. So we've got A2 here and we've got A1 here. So the cross-sectional area 1 there and cross-sectional area 2 here. And we know that A2 is equal to 2A1. So what we're trying to work out is the velocity in this aneurysm. So we've got that the velocity in the aneurysm is equal to A1V1 on A2. And now we'll substitute this in here. So we've got A1 on 2A1 times V1. And so this is equal to 0 0.40 on 2, which is equal to 0 0.20 meters per second. So we've now calculated the velocity of the blood through the aneurysm. Now what we're asked to do is calculate the change in pressure on the wall. So what we need to do is calculate the pressure in here. So to do the pressure, let's do it over here. 
we're going to need to use Bernoulli's equation. So we've got P1 plus a half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus a half rho V2 squared. We've left the rho GH terms off because these are at the same height. So this term is the same on each side of the equation. So we can they would cancel each other out and hence we've left them off. So what we want to know is what's the change in pressure. So we want to calculate P2 minus P1. So we subtract P1 from this side and then on this side we've got a half rho V1 squared minus V2 squared. So this is equal to a half. Now we'll need to know the density of blood. So we were told previously that the density of blood was equal to 1050 kilograms per meter cubed. So we'll use that same value. So this is 1050 times V1, the speed in here was 0 0.40 squared minus 0 0.20 squared, the velocity in the second part in the aneurysm that we calculated. So solving this on the calculator, we end up with 63 pascals. So that's the change in pressure between here and here. So it's at a higher pressure in here. And so because pressure is equal to force over area, if we've got a higher pressure, then we've got a higher force exerted on those walls. Force is equal to pressure times area. And this area is the surface area of the aneurysm, which is greater than the surface area of, of the normal wall. And so the force of the blood on the walls of the aneurysm is quite a lot larger than the force of the blood on the normal walls. And so this increases the risk of the rapture. Another health problem is as we eat lots of fatty foods and high cholesterol foods, foods or we smoke, we can get fatty deposits on the walls of our arteries and veins which narrows them. So this is called arteriosclerosis and as a result of this it can cause the blood to flow much more quickly through those arteries or veins. So let's have a look now at some of the details of this. So a blood vessel is reduced in size from 3 millimetres to 1 millimetre in diameter by fatty deposits on the walls. How does this affect the flow of blood? So we know that the volume rate of flow is constant. So AV is equal to a constant. And so what we need to do is work out the cross-sectional area. Now this is for a circular tube. And so the cross-sectional area is the surface area of a circle. So this is equal to pi r squared. And the radius is equal to half the diameter. So this tells us that the surface area is equal to pi times d over 2 all squared. So that's pi d squared on 4. So we know that we've got a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. And when it's been reduced, we've got this diameter, D2 is equal to 1 millimetre, and D1 is equal to 3 millimetres. So we've got A1, which is pi on 4 D1 squared, times V1 is equal to A2, which is pi on 4 D2 squared, V2, just substituting in for the cross-sectional area from down here. And so these pi on 4s will cancel each other out. And so we've got the velocity through the reduced section is equal to d1 squared times v1 over d2 squared. And so d1 squared, that's 3 millimetres squared, so that's 9 millimetres over d2, which is 1 millimetre squared, so that's 1 square millimetre, times v1. And so it's 9 times v1. So it has to flow nine times as fast through this affected region. So it flows nine times as fast through the narrow region.
So luckily we've developed medical techniques to deal with this arterial sclerosis, the narrowing of the arteries and veins. You can have what's called angioplasty, which is a small medical procedure where they put what's effectively a balloon into your artery or vein. So they put a little narrow tube and then they pump it up with a balloon and this widens your artery or vein and so that the blood flow can return to normal. So in this video we've seen that these equations for fluid flow have applications for the flow of blood around the human body as well as applications for how fast a river flows. In the next video we're going to be looking at dams and how a dam in the river can change the flow of the river but more importantly the dam can be used as a source of energy for us to use.